Hey, what's up? This is Adapter here. What's stopping you looking like an absolute fashion god? Maybe it's the weather, meaning that you can't wear a really cool but impractical outfit. Maybe your job or school is forcing you to wear a lame uniform. Maybe you're allergic to colour. Wednesday Adams kind of dripped out though. I'm willing to bet though, most people think the answer is money. I know all about the coolest stuff out there. I'm terminally online. I've AI trained my brain on a thousand fit videos. I just don't have the cash to execute that stuff. Especially when you're being fed new releases and collabs constantly and told this is the thing that you need right now. Unless you're operating a crypto exchange and running off with everyone's money, there's just no way of keeping up. Of course, there's a lot of pressure to own trendy clothing and to buy now. Uh, that leads people into purchasing more fast fashion stuff, which satisfies that immediate demand, but comes with its own problems. However, I think you can absolutely participate in fashion as a hobby, become the drip king you were born to be, and wear interesting or unique pieces on a budget. And to prove it, I'm setting up a little challenge based around one of the most expensive streetwear aesthetics, what used to be called techwear clothing. The high cost is so consistent in techwear because of that need for high performance or functional fabrics, lots of features and utilitarian stuff, and for everything to look good as well, that that partly led to the rise of dropshippers and AliExpress stores and stuff like that, selling what they claim to be techwear clothing as a budget alternative. It's all stuff which, as we've investigated in numerous previous videos, is compromised at best and absolutely unwearable at worst. If we can get great techwear clothing cheaply, we can get anything. So with a total budget of £500, about $600, which is not even enough to buy one luxury techwear jacket, we're going to see exactly how much cool and interesting designer clothing we can get hold of that fits this style. And more importantly, what tips or advice can we share with you to help you do the same thing? And not just for technical fashion, but whatever aesthetic you happen to be in favour of. Let's get started. I said we a few times in that intro section, that's because I'm going to make things interesting. I've had my fair share of deals, we've talked about that in previous videos, but I want to bring in a new perspective and really focus on archetypal items which fit that techwear mould rather than just buying things that I personally like, because otherwise I'm going to end up buying some decade old crusty bit of acronym with a massive hole in it and being like, look everyone, isn't this a great deal? And everyone with a normal functioning brain will look at it and be like, no. So I called up community member and bargain hunting professional Ando, who's built a pretty impressive wardrobe almost exclusively from scouting amazing deals online and issued him the challenge. All right, the rules are simple. You've got 500 pound total budget, publicly available listing, so no calling up your mates for special deals. Easy to access marketplaces like Grail, eBay, Depop that anyone can use. And actual brands only, no fast fashion stuff. And anything you purchase, you send straight to me. So I don't know what you're gonna buy or what's gonna show up. Hey. What's up? This is Ando here. And yeah, I've got a few Ferris deals in the past. You know, anything ranging from Nike Lab ACG for £15 to Stone Island Shadow Project jackets for £190, even though they were meant to be like a grand, brand new. I'm really looking forward to this challenge. I think we can get some great stuff. After I kind of pick out some stuff, I'm going to be negotiating hard, try and get Ant some good deals and hopefully not waste his money in the process. Well, that sounded pretty convincing, so I sent a large chunk of cash to a man I met on the internet and waited for the bargains to roll in. And roll in they did. Straight out of the gate, we had some Nike Lab ACG, of course, a canonical technical clothing brand because of that design input from acronym co-founder Errolson Hugh. And though let me know that he had picked up a little bit of a steal, something that had retailed for over £400, he had managed to get for 125 That is a big difference, so I was pretty excited to check it out, and, well, let's have a look. It's actually back there. You've been looking at it in these videos for quite some time. I know, I know, it's not an Alpine. We have here the Down Parker from the final Nike Lab ACG collection in FW18. But the fact that it isn't an Alpine is actually exactly the point. While some Nike Lab ACG pieces command pretty high resale prices, others are less well-known or less highly regarded despite having the same product quality. And that means you can pick up some pretty nice deals. So tip one, find brands that you like and look outside those hyped pieces to discover some better deals. Let's take a further look and see exactly what we got for our £125. This piece exemplifies how the collection shifted over the years, from single colour pieces where the branding and technical features like pockets are at the forefront, to greater experimentation with colours and patterns. These dazzling concentric circle patterns are like an ultra-modern snow camo, which I didn't like when this released, but now I've seen it more over the years and my own clothing has grown more adventurous, I feel like I have a greater appreciation for this. It'll definitely come in handy for camouflage during snowball fight season. Although the jacket isn't 
quite as feature packed as some others, there is some stuff in here which ACG fans will appreciate. Multi zip collar allows some adjustability, the enormous hand pockets give you pretty decent storage ability, it's got this cool adjustable hood as well which is pretty nice and big and protective, but most interestingly it's got this adjustable hem so that you can convert it between a shorter and longer length. That works pretty well, it's very easy to do, and it gives you two different jacket looks in one. It's also really rather warm, this is the warmest jacket that I own now, making it perfect for these cold winter months. Anything downfill is going to be expensive, it's got a great warmth to weight ratio, the synthetic stuff can't really match, but you're getting a massive coat for just over £100, that blows any hashtag techwear piece out of the water in terms of functionality and performance. I think Ando is off to a strong start here. Another way of getting great deals is not just looking for the less hyped pieces of brands you like, but broadening those horizons and looking at more niche brands altogether. Expanding your marketplace searching to more niche brands might yield fewer results, yes, but you'll also get less competition, less other people searching for them, so potentially lower prices and maybe more flexibility on those prices as well. Whatever aesthetic you're really into, you'll probably have some idea of what the most hyped brands are in that space, and maybe some others which are a little bit more niche or a little bit less hyped, and those are definitely some of the ones you could go after. In this case, our brand is by Bora, because Ando picked up for us these cropped sweatpants. Although I've mentioned this brand before, they're not particularly well known, I think because a lot of the time they're lending their craft and their knitting expertise to other brands. A lot of what they do is collaborations. Their output is very weighty, very high quality, always super innovative, I think they do really interesting stuff, but also quite expensive as a result. These pants here retailed at something like £350, we picked them up for about £130. Again, quality versus cost is really good here. They look really substantial, they fit that technical futuristic look, uh, they certainly feel worlds apart from that hashtag techwear cargo jogger type stuff. However, they're also... Well, I don't know, you tell me. These were a size medium, so I think the crop is a little bit too severe on me, and I also feel like the drop crotch that they have makes it a little bit hard to manoeuvre in. It's a shame, because if these were full length or a bit less cropped and with a higher rise, I think these would be a great, unique pair of pants with this real interesting material, but in their current form, they just didn't quite hit for me. Ando was interested to check these out though, so I sent them over to him after I had a go with them, and uh, I think he ended up selling them, so we'll strike these ones from the list. But nonetheless, it's a good example of how looking at more niche or underrated brands can yield some interesting results. Something that's super important to remember when dealing with these marketplaces, everything we got here was from either eBay or Depop, that you are, for the most part, dealing with individual people. If you walk into Selfridges and try to barter for stuff, you'll probably get kicked out, but of course that's not the case here. In pretty much every case here, the price that we ended up paying for this clothing was less than what was advertised, just because we asked. I asked Ando this directly, assuming he's not a master of psychological manipulation, what is going on here? How are we able to pay these prices under what's being asked? Yeah, definitely don't gaslight people for steals. It's not worth it. There's a bit of a knack to spotting um, potential steals. Um, I would say the first one is very high price, very high list price. But most people who do that, they'll put open to offers, um, especially if the item's been sitting there for like two years or something. I would always recommend using the DMs instead of the offer buttons because I think like there's always a human element in this. If you kind of bring in your backstory, how much you want an item, you know, is that a grail of yours, then maybe they'll be more likely to sell it to you. The final one, and I'd say the most successful one for me, is really bad SEO. So people listing items incorrectly. Don't kind of assume everyone's going to be calling this the correct names. Look for things like Nike ACG, you know, you can find some diamonds in the rough there for sure. This is possibly the best info for ensuring that you're paying good prices on this stuff. But let's go back to the clothes because the next thing to show up was another jacket, which I think also helps to exemplify some of these points. It's an Enfant Levy in Zala, which retailed for about 500 pounds and I paid 95 pounds. This was an eBay auction and the starting price was set to like 110, I think, and I offered 70 and then there was a counter offer for 95, which we accepted. That's pretty crazy. Enfant Levé as a brand are far better known for their pants. You're gonna have more people looking for Hermes 2s and things like that than any of their jackets. And as another potential reason why we ended up getting this for such a steal, we bought this all the way back in July. Yes, this video has been in the works for quite a long time. That's not exactly jacket season in the Northern Hemisphere, so there's gonna be less competition for stuff like that. The downside, of course, you're gonna have to wait a little bit until you can fully make use of some of those items. I'm pretty happy with the jacket itself, though. If you've been around a while, you'll know that Enfant Levé offer 
technical and vaguely futuristic looking things in a variety of performance based fabrics. They use dry skin and stots a lot, for example. And in this case, the Itzala here is made of a nice lightweight nylon that feels slightly nicer to your average technical fabric and has a bit of a crinkle finish. And uh, of course comes in this very nice cold dyed green color. Oh, and just like the Nike Lab jacket, this has two different lengths. Yes, in a similar fashion, it's got these poppers on so that you can fold this up into a short coat or have it down as a longer one. Aside from that, it boasts a few standard features, which make this certainly good enough for a daily jacket. Is it gonna be the most waterproof or windproof thing in the world? Probably not, but it'll certainly work very nicely for your average conditions. And at 95 pounds, I think you're still getting a lot of jacket for the money here. And crucially, you're probably gonna look better and be more comfortable than the fast fashion crowd. And for 80% off, I think this would make a great item for someone relatively new to this style looking to expand their wardrobe. Ando then told me he threw a couple of experiments into the mix. The next couple of things to arrive were vintage items. Items. But thanks to their materials, their overall styling, I think still absolutely work in 2022-2023. Although older items might be in more worn condition, they can also be a great source for bargains, as less info about them might exist online or they're not in people's memory as a hot new release. That was definitely the case with these two items. So keep a lookout for potential vintage pickups, even in a style like techwear, because a lot of this stuff is cyclical, and you'd be surprised how long the idea of futuristic or technical sportswear has been around. Some of those older things still absolutely look good today. And the first of these two, oh boy. If you weren't convinced up until this point that we can get some designer stuff, some really cool fashion pieces at affordable prices, this is gonna be the piece to convince you, I think. Stone Island insulated jacket, for 60 pounds. That's like $80. You could go into Zara and spend more money on a jacket. And all I have to say is that this is a super interesting piece. It's all black with a really cool shape. It's a bit short and a bit wide, which is kind of unusual, at least for modern Stone Island, but with this really cool patterning across the body. So you can see all of these different panels. So I think the jacket has a lot of personality. This is from all the way back in 2003. So it really is a vintage piece. As a result, just not something that you're gonna see around very often now. And although it has signs of use, there's a few loose threads around, I still think it's in remarkably good condition. So this is really great evidence that if you're buying a high quality item of clothing, that really has the potential to last you long term. It's not something that you can just wear for a season and then you want to chuck out after. And it really fits in with my current style. Whilst being ultra wearable, uh, you could use this as an outer layer or a mid layer. And uh, it's pretty warm too. I feel like it's got a bit more warmth than something like the Atom LT. So all in all, something like this, a great item for someone looking to start out in a more technical style. Style. You can wear it as an outer layer, and then if you pick up a Gore-Tex jacket or something at a later date, well, you can just wear this underneath. One weird thing though, you can see here there's a little patch on the arm where a badge would go, but there's no buttons or anything. Uh, and I managed to find another example of one of these that looks like it does have buttons on. So I don't know if a previous owner removed the buttons or they fell off or something, but this is another one of those things where that potentially was one of the things that enabled us to get this for cheaper. It's going to put off all of the get the badge in loving Stone Island hype beasts and thus leaving people who really care about the interest of the item apart from that. And what's more, if I really want to, I could probably sew some buttons back on here, use a spare patch I've got, and then boom, we're back in business. But even if I don't do that, the overall coolness, the utility factor for this piece, especially for 60 pounds, absolutely great. I can't fault it. And I've already worn it in a bunch of outfits. The second of the two was a pretty similar price, 50 pounds for this vintage North Face item. Okay, it's a little bit of a less prestigious brand than Stone Island, but the thing that interested me here was it is made of Gore-Tex fabric, but not the current kind, a totally different type of fabric, which is really quite kind of coarse on the outside, has a little bit of crunch to it, but still a slight sort of almost natural material softness. It doesn't quite have that artificial feeling of modern Gore-Tex. Really strange and interesting. You just wouldn't see something like this now. I have to admit, this one isn't in the best condition. It's missing a toggle down here. There's maybe one or two other bits that aren't that great, but it's the kind of thing that's cosmetic damage. You could fix those things fairly easily if you wanted to. And aside from that, the jacket is clearly sturdy enough that it's lasted the test of time. This is a reminder not to be afraid to look outside the standard brands of your chosen aesthetic. They could give more interesting results and allow you to be more creative, ending up with stuff that people haven't seen all over social media. I also think this would have sold for more if it was in slightly better condition. So if you see something like that, that's got some cosmetic damage, you think I can fix him, then that might enable you to grab a little bit of a bargain, do it up a bit, and then you've got something that is a bit more personal to you, gonna last you a long time, and you managed to buy 
for a real good price. That's a good one, but it's not even the end. We've got one more piece, which I think any techwear fan is really going to enjoy. We're fans of Neman over here who do some really awesome creative dyed outerwear. I've got one of their Zephyr jackets from a couple of years ago, and I think it's a great looking piece, really interesting. They're doing stuff that other brands kind of aren't. They did a collab with Puma last year, and in fact, they've just released another one, so I definitely recommend checking out that new stuff. But from the first collaboration, I have one of their more substantial jackets over here. Now, this really was a ridiculous deal because the retail was £550 and we paid £70. And what's more, this is brand new. It still has the tag on it. Absolutely crazy discount. This was being sold by Cancer Research on Depop. Often these charity shop or thrift store accounts can be good sources of really interesting pieces like this because their main priority is just shifting their inventory. They're not trying to get the absolute maximum price for everything. What's more, they're probably not gonna have experts appointed to all the niche fashion aesthetics. You mean they didn't hire a techwear specialist? Most importantly though, you're helping out a charity with your purchase, so that's definitely worth doing. Taking a look, it boasts some futuristic, almost over-branding, reminiscent of racing uniforms, so I think will definitely appeal to the more cyberpunk attuned people watching. Why was it so expensive at retail though? Well, the big thing here is this is made by a fabric made by Limonta, and they've got a big panel for it in the inside. That one right there. They've worked with Acronym, Stone Island, CP Company in the past, so it's a company with some credentials. It's got a slightly plasticky, but also very smooth matte finish to the face fabric, which is quite interesting, uh, and also this grid backer as well and tapered seams on the inside. Very interesting feeling. There's a couple of cool tech bits as well though. There's this boa adjustment system on the back of the neck to adjust the hood, so you can very quickly twist it to tighten the hood up if you need to in case of a rainstorm or loads of wind and stuff. It works relatively well, not quite as good as toggles, but you can certainly adjust it faster and it's just cool as well. That hood is packable, in fact, and once tucked away, you've got this really structured kind of wide collar, which looks very protective. Again, quite a nice little feature. This isn't necessarily my favorite jacket ever, but if you're a big fan of the slightly flashier, cyberpunk looking stuff, something like this is honestly a great option. I think at the price, it's giving you quite a lot, and certainly if you compare to that retail price, again, you're getting a lot of jacket for your money here. So with 500 pounds, discounting those by Bora pants, we got a Nike Lab ACG down jacket, on Fon Lave jacket, vintage Stone Island and North Face jackets, and this Nemen and Puma jacket. That is a huge amount of stuff for the price of less than one luxury technical jacket. Of course, your average person is not going to go on an absolute rampage and buy all of these things. You're probably just going to pick one. Hopefully, there was at least one thing here that made you think, wow, it's literally me for real. We've gone through many of the techniques Ando used to procure these deals, the kind of things that he was looking for. Um, they were all public, so anyone could have bought them. But there is one thing that we didn't really talk about. Ando, obviously, you're going to use a bunch of different techniques for finding stuff cheaply, whether that's looking at more niche brands, the older stuff people won't have heard of, or just doing filthy lowballs on people. Is there something else that you're not telling us? To be honest, even if you know exactly where to look, you're still going to need a lot of patience because there's not a magical deal store that you can walk into and just buy anything you want for like £15. You don't want to do regretful buys where you're just buying things to fill in for those, you know, bigger items you want. Although one thing to note with that is you can definitely um, find some new golden items that you just would never have expected through the similar brands or similar tags, you know. For example, I bought a pair of Stone Island trousers from the year 2001. They ended up being like 50 pounds. Um, and the quality is incredible and it really pushed my style in a different direction. So yeah, there's definitely a good side to that where you can discover stuff that will help you on your fashion journey, help you find yourself more. Maybe you've been looking too much at the meta of what, how everyone's dressing and whatnot, and maybe you can actually find some things that are really unique, really different, you know, vintage or things that just haven't ever been spoken about online. So yeah, I would definitely recommend, you know, not being afraid to branch out and just try new things. This concept is actually mega important. If you're browsing primarily on these marketplaces, unfortunately, you can't just buy exactly what you want as soon as you want it. And I totally get that if you want or you need something right now, having to wait instead and put time into finding something you want it can be kind of annoying. However, long term, you're probably going to be far happier with your clothing, you're going to have better stuff to wear, and you're probably going to find out more about the brands and pieces you really like along 
along the way. I really hope this video was useful or you enjoyed it in some way. Please do give it a like if you did. And uh, I've got to say a massive shout out to Ando, who this video would definitely not have been possible without. I'd strongly suggest checking out his Instagram if you're into this kind of fashion. There's some great content on there. And it was really down to him that we were so consistent in the quality of stuff that we were able to pick up here. I also desperately need to have a clear out, as you can tell by this bulging jacket rail in the background there. So at some point, I will be getting rid of at least some of these things. I will put them up for a reasonable price, like pretty much what I paid for all of this stuff. So keep an eye on Instagram and stuff. I'll probably advertise when I do eventually put these things up. But I'd love to hear what you think if you've managed to pick up some great stuff from secondhand marketplaces rather than the fast fashion things. Would absolutely love to hear some of your stories. And again, hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a like if you did. And let me know what you thought the best item was as well. That's it from me this time though. Catch you next time.